If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and leave us a comment. We love hearing from you. Today's uh, Tip Tuesday, we'll be um, talking about the twin needles. And you can have the twin needles for jerseys or for wovens. Um, right now I have um, the ones for jerseys or knit fabrics, these stretch ones, but you can get these for wovens as well. The twin needle um, goes into your sewing machine and um, you can sort of mimic the stitching like in the cover stitch machine. And if you don't have a cover stitch machine, the uh, twin needle is a very good substitute. So you would use the uh, twin needle for hems, on skirts, on, um, you can do it on trousers or on any knit fabrics around your necklines. It gives a very neat professional look. I'm going to show you later on the sewing machine how to set it up and how to use it. So a twin needle looks like two parallel lines and this uh, mimics sort of a, um, a hem band and I used the soft stretch here to help me um, have an even stitch on the bottom so this is very good to use in your hems on your knits because as you can see it's still nice and stretchy and I used the knit stable tape on the other side and it's not quite as stretchy, but it gives a nice sturdy hem as well. So if it doesn't have to be as stretchy, the knit tape just gives you um, a nice base and then you don't have tunneling here when you do the twin needling. You can also use the um, wonder tape just to to help adhere the hem. So if if we use this little piece here, as our sample, I have the knit stay tape here. You can see that I adhered it. And if you just turn that over and iron that, that's how that would work. And then you have a nice base. The only disadvantage to the knit stay tape is that it sometimes sort of creeps up. And you can tell that here it's not quite as nice but you could use for this one um, if you didn't want to use pins you can use the um, wonder tape okay a piece of wonder tape and you could just put that on there and peel that off and then you just uh, with the soft stretch, it's a double-sided tape, so you adhere it the same way, and then you peel that back, and you can see the sticky tape here, and if you fold that over now and use the iron, it will fuse it to the other side which is really nice because then you don't need pins anything like that it won't shift on you and it's still stretchy that's why i love uh, the soft stretch okay now it's the hem would be ready for a twin needle let's give it another little iron Another thing you can use the twin needle for is actually um, decorative stitching. So you can use some of your fancy stitches and then make really cool designs. Like this is uh, just a, a zigzag stitch. And because I used the twin needle, you have two zigzag stitches. And this was another little decorative stitch on our puff machines. This actually looks like a little railroad. So you can use the twin needle to make some really cool designs on um, your wovens or your knits. For the knits, you would um, stabilize it with a tear away or wash away stabilizer. Otherwise, it, you would get too much tunneling, but it works really well. So let's go over to the sewing machine and I will show you how to set it up with the twin needle.
We are ready to um, set up the sewing machine for the twin needle. So there it is. So it looks like two needles in the same shaft as your normal sewing machine. And the flat piece goes towards the back and you just, sorry, and you just put the needle in the same way as a normal needle. It's just that you have two separate needles. The only thing that you um, have to be aware of, your um, throat plate has to be big enough to accommodate the two needles. Um, the twin needles come in different sizes. This is a two millimeter. That means the two needles are separated by about two millimeters. There is a size four, which is four millimeters and a size six. So you just have to make sure if you can see here, the throat plate is about seven and a half millimeters that it clears the throat plate. Otherwise your needles will just break off and that will be sad. Then you need two spools of thread. One goes into your normal um, location and then most sewing machines will have an additional spool holder which would go somewhere up on top here. Ours goes right here in this location and then you put your second spool thread right there. If you don't have one you can still use the um, twin needle you just fill up a, a separate bobbin and then you would put the bobbin with the spool. Just don't use a big spool, use a smaller spool. Um, use those together or two smaller, you can have two bobbins then if, if your stick isn't big enough and use that instead of, um, instead of the separate spool holder. Let's put the cap back on. And then you take your two threads together and thread it normally like you would your normal thread, the same way. Now you have to th manually thread it through, ne through the needles. If you have a needle threader, it won't work because you have two separate ones. So now we just thread it through the left without twisting it, preferably. <laughs> and then it goes through the other needle. And then you're all set up. There. And now it goes under your presser foot and that's it. So you also have to make sure that your presser foot is big enough here the opening that the two needles go in. Um, so usually your sewing machine will have different feet with different widths. Like the zigzag foot is a perfect one to use for the twin needle. So a quarter inch foot won't make it because the uh, opening is not big enough. Okay, then um, you want if you're doing a hem like this, you want the stitching very close to the edge. So you sort of I make sure that it's it's covered by both needles. So I sort of put it underneath and then I check it. Yes, it would cover. It would be covered by the two needles and you would want a straight stitch and not a zigzag stitch. And preferable, um, you should have a length between three and a half and three. So a longer stitch length. There you go. And then I'm gonna show you um, just quickly how you could do a decorative stitch. You just have to choose a different one. Let's choose, for example, the zigzag stitch. And you just want to see that, that your needle still clear the opening. So you sort of, this just clears it. So this will still work. You don't want the needles to break. 
So I hand crank the first couple of stitches. So I'll just see because if it wouldn't, I would hear a sort of a hitting sound. And then I can see now that it clears and it makes a super cool decorative stitch. Just like that. So you can embellish your garments with that. It would look cool on a yoke or on the sleeves, something different. So the main things with the twin needle is that you have to be mindful of your throat plate, that you don't hit anything and break anything. Um, and when you do it first, just try out a couple of things. Don't go right away on your garments. Um, you want to make sure that your tension is is good on the back. The bobbin sort of makes a zigzag stitch in the back. Um, and with this machine, I had to up the tension, but not all machines are the same. So you have to play with it and see how the how the tension is. So at the beginning, I tried out quite a few different ones and you can see here the tension at the beginning was way too loose. So I played with the tension and it um, it was much better. So this is the last one. I yanked it up to a nine. But as I said, every machine would be different. I hope that helped a little bit. Twin needles are a lot of fun and you should just play around with your machine.